Hello everyone and happy World Elephant Day. If you are not listening to this on the release date, that is August 12th every year. I love elephants, they are my favorite animals, and I do have a lot of episodes on elephants. So if this is your first time listening, I studied African forest elephants for my PhD, so I know a lot about them. And I will link in the show notes past episodes about elephants and my research involving elephants. But today, because it's summertime and COVID has died down, although now the variants might be changing things again, travel is opening up again and people are out doing things. So I've been wanting to do an episode on elephant tourism for a long time. This is something I really care about in addition to loving wildlife and conservation. I also really care about animal ethics and the way that they are kept in captivity um, and and the human animal interaction, education and entertainment that has to do with that. And I have actually a lot of episodes on those things too, but today we're really gonna focus on elephants. So if you see somebody on Instagram pose with an elephant, maybe they're feeding it, maybe they're riding it, maybe they are saying it's a sanctuary, an orphanage and they're petting it, how do you know if that is something that's okay to do. Are those people really helping elephants or is it all a scam? We're gonna go over all of that today. If this is the first episode you're listening to, I just wanted to say it might sound a little funny. I'm traveling, I'm in my parents' place in Buffalo, New York, and this room is pretty echoey, but it's the only good room with good light and I also post this on my YouTube channel. So anyways, um, let's get into it. After the intro music, let's talk about elephants. Okay, before we get started, let's talk about the different ways that you can experience elephants through tourism. You can see them in the wild. There are animal circuses that have elephants. In fact, elephants are a really big draw for elephant circuses. You can see them in zoos, and then there are these um, elephant sanctuaries, most of which permit um, seeing the elephants, and we'll talk about how you can tell if they are legit or not. So um, the best way to see elephants is to see them in the wild. This is the most ethical way, um, and I understand though it's really for privileged people. Um, even if you live in a country where there is elephant range, many people still are not able to see them. Um, so for example, when I, I lived in Kenya for a year, if you were to go to Nairobi, most people have not seen elephants. And um, also people can experience them in a negative way, for example, crop raiding. Um, so <laughs> so anyway, I'm, I'm digressing. But, um, but yeah, seeing them on safari is a really fantastic way to see them. And it's not 100% um, benign. There can be negative effects. Um, for example, there can be wildlife harassment, so you have to be really careful with the different guides you choose. And if you do see guides like getting too close, usually with elephants, it's it's not that bad because they're so intimidating and they can charge you and stuff. They usually don't try to uh, break that um, that boundary. It's more of a concern for smaller animals, but just something to be cautious about when viewing any wildlife. You want to give them distance. You want to watch their behavior to make sure that they are they don't look upset or stressed out. You don't want to stress out the animal. You want to observe them um, from a distance and let them be the animals they are. Okay, so the best way, if you can afford it, is to do a safari. Now, I am going to jump right into the worst way to see elephants, and I highly recommend you do not do this at all, um, Under honestly, under no circumstances. And this is um, animal circuses and Obviously, since we're talking about elephants, circuses with elephants here. So this applies, my, my philosophy for this applies to all animal circuses, unless it's like a domestic animal, like a dog or something like that. But for wild animals, they are they do not belong in circuses. They're, there is just no way that the circus can provide a high quality life for those animals. So here's why. Um, the reasons are they include the training of the animal, 
and the overall living conditions. So for elephants, these are huge, huge animals. It is difficult to train an elephant. So what they do is they separate the moms from the young elephants, and um, basically they go through this process where they quote unquote break the elephant. Now. Elephants love babies, even not their own babies. Like they, the females are in family groups and when a baby is born, it is a big celebration, it's a big deal. So they love babies in general. So you can imagine how hard it would be for a mom elephant to be away from her elephant calf. And um, historically, circuses have physically abused elephants to get them to do tricks. People say they don't do this anymore, but I have never seen evidence of them doing this in a humane way. Um, people have, I've, I've written a blog post about this and people have countered that and I said, you know, well give me the evidence that they do it in a humane way um, and the training, but they never are able to do that. Um, so basically they, um, they break that poor baby elephant and then the elephant is essentially under human control and um, they use what are called bull hooks. So bull hooks are these, these poles and they have pointy ends and the bull hooks are meant to keep people in, in charge, dominant. And the reason why they have these pointy ends is because they use them on the sensitive parts of elephants. So you, they use them behind the ears and they use them uh, on the backs of their feet. feet. <laughs> and um, if they're not doing something that, the, elephant, that the, the guide or the trainer doesn't want them to do, then they can reinforce it with the bull hook, which causes them some pain. I have watched videos in defense of um, Asian elephant riding and um, sanctuaries in um, other countries and a vet who was actually, okay, sorry, my um, headphones got cut off, so I had to take them off. Um, so I was saying is that I watched this video in defense of elephant rides and elephant sanctuaries where it allows human interactions and the vet talked about the bull use and how it was humane to use and she even showed the elephants in the open sores behind their ears and she was arguing that like it wasn't that bad and it wasn't a big deal um, but I view that as, as awful like elephants shouldn't have to live like that. So the training methods are just horrible, and as I mentioned, even if they were able to do them in a really kind, humane way, just the fact that you're separating the, the calf from its mother that long and when they're that young, I mean, that's really sad. The elephant calf needs its mother at that time. The other thing you need to think about is how the elephants are held in captivity. And this is something that people don't think about. When they see a circus, they see an elephant perform with the lights, the costumes, the, the, um, the anthropomorphizing of the animal, so they will make them do a trick in a context that makes them look happy. Um, people don't think about what these animals are doing and how they're living when they're, the lights are off. So we've already learned how the training is bad, but the circus, the elephant might perform for, I don't know, say an hour. What is the elephant doing in those other 23 hours of the day? Well, if they're going from city to city city, they're not going to have these big ranges for elephants to roam, so they're chained. They're chained or they're in trailers. And um, the elephants have to be transported between cities as well, so that means they're not roaming a lot either. Elephants are really big animals, they need exercise, they need places to roam. Um, so this is a really pretty um, low quality, honestly awful life for elephants. So I highly recommend that you do not go to circuses and I even take it as far as to encouraging municipalities um, and um, and states and at the federal level if we can get elephants banned from circuses and there's been many countries around the world that have either banned all animals, all wild animals from circuses or they have particularly banned elephants. Okay, so let's go to the um, more complicated ones and um, let's do the elephant sanctuary because that seems to be the most common way that people 
are experiencing elephants. Um, I see on Instagram a lot of times people touching elephant trunks, posing with elephants, um, feeding them, etc. So I'm going to go over some of the ways that you can tell if you're visiting a real sanctuary or not. So honestly, the best way is if you are interacting with the elephant, if you're touching them, if you're getting close to them, it's probably not a real sanctuary. There are, there's at least one sanctuary I know that's an exception to this, and that's the David um, Sheldrick Wildlife Trust. They do have opportunities where you can touch orphaned baby elephants. These are true orphans that come as a result of poaching. Um, and they do offer like very limited hands-on experiences. But most of the time when you see those elephants with their, um, their handlers, their rangers, they are always with the same types of people and they're always wearing the same clothes because elephants are so smart, you want them to identify those specific people as being okay and not people in general. You still want them to have a healthy fear and and even of um, locals because poaching happens. So they're very careful about um, limiting the interactions and I believe I've just seen pictures of like people touching them and usually it's a very limited um, select people um, like I don't like people who donate a lot of money. So if you are touching an elephant, um, that is a really good sign that it's not a real sanctuary. Real sanctuaries have the animals, um, the animals needs as a priority, the animal's welfare as the front most priority. So they are concerned with the animal living out the best life possible that it can after a life of abuse. So sanctuary animals, they're usually, um, from circuses, they could be former pets, um, and with elephants, a lot of these are Asian elephant sanctuaries, and Asian elephants, um, they, they say a lot for these sanctuaries that they are orphaned or that they're former logging um, elephants, and this is not true. Um, a lot of elephants are taken from the wild for this industry, and if you go to the blog post, um, there's actually links to papers that talk about this and experts um, that talk about the elephant tourism being a threat to, um, to Asian elephants and, and a conservation threat to Asian elephants in those areas. So if you can touch the animal, it's probably not a sanctuary. A really good example of a sanctuary that is legit is the elephant sanctuary in Tennessee. They take former zoo elephants, former circus elephants, um, and they they actually don't even open their doors to the public at all. So the elephants have this huge area to roam in Tennessee, and they do not have any expectations. They don't have to interact with the public at all. And the reason why they take it to that extreme is because they feel that elephants have lived their life in front of people and, and performing and they don't want to put any pressure on those elephants to perform at all. So for example, say you had a donor and the donor wanted to get close to the elephants or feed them. Then there would be an expectation for the elephants to come close and they want the elephants to be able to decide what they want to do basically at all times um, given the, the health and safety of the elephants. So I believe at night they do have elephant barns for them and things like that but they don't want the elephant to have to quote unquote perform any time at all. So they just completely do it off limits to people and I really respect them for that. If you're watching on YouTube, it's super hot here. <laughs> it's like 90 degrees out. Okay, so you don't um, feed the animals, you don't touch the animals, this other tip goes along with um, the zoos. You don't want them to perform tricks of any kind. And with these sanctuaries, it might not be obvious, like they are, I, I don't know, like standing on a ball, or I haven't been to a circus in forever, so I don't even know what kind of tricks they do, but like, like standing on each other with their front legs. They might be just posing for a picture. That's still a trick. They have to hold that pose. They have to do this all day long, um, as long as there are tourists there. 
So um, even though it doesn't look like a trick, it is still a trick. You can also look for signs of bull hooks. So you can actually look to see if there are bull hooks present. Um, and if there are bull hooks present, that's also a sign that it's it's not a legit um, Asian or um, elephant sanctuary. So don't support any places with bull hooks. And again, the reason why they use the bull hooks is because they have to keep the elephants in line in case something goes wrong. Now for elephant riding, a lot of people are against elephant riding and people talk about the pressure of the person on the elephant. Um, I'm not even gonna touch that because I'm not 100% sure uh, about the, the details with it. But for me, I don't elephant ride because of the bull hook, because the use of the bull hook, because the elephants are trained, um, et cetera. And um, like I said, so many people are against elephant rides, but they are not against these elephant sanctuaries. And the thing is that a lot of these sanctuaries, they actually allow rides or they trade elephants depending on the tourists. So I read in this National Geographic article, and I've talked to experts about this too, on um, Clubhouse, I was in a, a Clubhouse room with different um, animal or elephant experts and um, and some of the, actually some of the National Geographic uh, writers of that. And it is so common, for example, if a group of Chinese tourists were to come, they would offer elephant rides. But if a group of European uh, tourists come, they say, oh, we don't allow elephant rides here. Because it just depends on how, um, how much that clientele is for or against elephant riding. So, you don't know what happens after you leave, and again, they can exchange elephants too. So um, they like rent their elephants out to different companies, and even though they are sanctuary, they might use those elephants. Um, they might use those elephants for riding other times. Going off of that point, you don't know what the elephants are doing when you're not there, even if they're not transporting elephants or they're not letting elephants um, rides occur, there are other things that negatively affect the elephant. So a big one, again, is chaining the elephants. People see the elephants interacting with humans all day and they think they're having a great time bathing the elephants um, and the elephants are being bathed and fed and stuff. But afterwards, um, or they might rotate their elephants and most of the time they're spending in, in chains actually. And as I mentioned before, elephants are, um, all species are a really wide ranging species. So they need exercise, they need social interaction, and these chains prevent them from doing that. I apologize if I sound a little scattered today. I am. I'm visiting family, trying to get this done um, in short as time as possible, um, but still giving you guys the good information, so I just want to apologize about that. So anytime you can get close to the elephant. You want to make sure if you do, if you are like with elephants on foot, that there's a barrier behind them. Um, and this applies to um, zoo environments, especially. Um, so you can get closer to the elephants, but there should be an, a barrier separating you two. Some other things to look for at the sanctuaries are that um, the animals have shade, food, and water. Those are just basics. That's what you should be looking at if um, for, for any type of, of um, animal tourism place that you visit. That's, those are just the basics that animals really, really need to protect themselves. And then finally, for these sanctuaries, I always recommend you, you look them up on TripAdvisor or just Google them on the internet. See the types of pictures that people are taking, the experiences that they've had. Um, so that's a way you can find out if they, let, if they allow elephant rides, things like that. Um, do your research before you go. You can even send it to me and I can do a search for you as well if you're, you're not sure. And lastly, let's talk about zoos. Now zoos are the most complicated um, because, I, and actually I actually have a whole series about zoos as well. 
because um, there are really good zoos and there are really bad zoos. And elephants are a particularly complicated animal because they are so large, they are so social, that some people even argue that zoos cannot um, should not have them at all, that they cannot ethically take care of them. Elephants are also among the most intelligent animals on earth as well. So some people argue that this is cruel, kind of like a prison. So I'm not going to, I understand both sides of the argument with, with that. Um, and the thing with responsible zoos is that they are not taking elephants from the wild anymore. They are doing captive breeding programs. So any zoos that are affiliated with the American zoos of, or the Association of zoos, uh, uh, zoos and Aquariums here in the United States, they are being captively bred. Now zoo is a broad definition, and again, you can check this video I have about zoos and um, a blog post that was inspired by Tiger King because the Tiger King had a zoo, and then there's like the San Diego Zoo or the National Zoo, um, or actually I'm, I live in North Carolina and our zoo is pretty good. It's actually in a more rural area, so the animals have a lot of space. So those zoos, or Disney's Animal Kingdom, I forgot. I knew I was missing one. I love Disney's Animal Kingdom. That's where I used to work. So there are, um, there's a lot of research going on in the animals there, understanding their behaviors, so they don't have these stereotypical behaviors. And these are behaviors where the animals um, have like like repetitive behaviors that they normally don't have in the wild. So for elephants, it's like swaying and head bobbing, and that's a sign of stress. Um, so, so zoos are more complicated and I recommend you go to AZA affiliated zoos um, and again you can look at the elephant exhibits online or look at people's pictures. You can try to see how big they are. Bigger the better, the more social they're able to make the elephants the better and the same rules apply. You don't want to touch them, you want to look for protected contact instead of bull hooks. So protected contact is when there are barriers separating the keepers and the elephants. Um, this is to protect the keepers and to protect the elephants. And zoos, just one thing, they actually will do training, but it's not tricks. So they will do some training for medical purposes. So for example, at Disney World, they trained the elephants to present an ear so they could take a blood sample. And this was so they could monitor their hormones. And particularly for elephants that were pregnant, Elephants are pregnant for two years, so they want to be able to monitor that pregnancy. And if it was really difficult for them to get blood and they had to anesthetize the elephant constantly, that would be so stressful, it would be really expensive. So they, they do train them using treats this way, but it's a really low trick and there's no consequence if the elephant doesn't do it. Um, basically, they get treats for doing it and they're, they're doing it with um, a positive association. So um, all the th same things apply for um, for zoos as they did for sanctuaries and tricks with circuses. Um, roadside zoos usually are not good. I don't recommend going to roadside zoos. Um, I, I have heard some people talk about AZA not being the best standard because AZA affiliation can depend on things like um, so it's like things to do with products and customer satisfaction and not necessarily animal welfare, but I think it's a good starting place and I don't recommend going to zoos that are not AZA affiliated, but I am open to suggestions if people have good examples, I would, I would be more than happy to look at them. Okay, so I hope this helped and um, I, I understand people want to touch elephants. I would love to touch an elephant. Um, I would love to touch all wild animals, but you have to think about the animal's best interest. Is it worth it for you to touch that animal? And in my opinion, that is a big no because of all the different ways that they suffer. Okay guys, thanks and um, see you next time.